Flux is a brand new text to image AI model that has been producing scary good results from lifelike photos of people with believably handwritten text to surreal landscapes and illustrations. Flux is quickly rising to the top as the king of AI image gen. It's honestly making the likes of Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and Imagen look like complete babies compared to this giant. Flux has come in there free, highly flexible, and open source. So today we're gonna be diving in, showing you the fastest way to install it. And then we're gonna generate some images, show where it really shines and also where it's really limited, as well as some tips and tricks to get the most out of this tool. So you can determine whether or not Flux is an actual game changer for your creative experiments or just some overhyped AI. IBS. Anyways, I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. Now, Flux is surprisingly easy to install. All we need are three things, a decent computer, a tool called Forge, and the Flux model. For the computer, since Flux runs locally, your computer needs to be powerful enough to handle generating images. If you can render animations, edit videos, or play video games, your computer is most likely good enough. I recommend having an RTX graphics card with some decent VRAM, but I'll also show you some things that you can do if your computer is not as souped up. For your reference, in this video, I'll be using a spoiled ass RTX 4090 to do these generations. That way, when you're watching, it's not gonna take so long. But in in the past I have used a 3060 and a 3070 and have gotten it to run well even though it has taken much longer to produce images. The next thing that you're going to need is Forge. Forge is an awesome UI that runs in your browser and will let us run AI models and install extensions. There are other wrappers like Comfy UI, but honestly, Forge is the easiest to use and it's just as easy as going to this GitHub page, clicking download on the package, Forge with CUDA 12.1 plus PyTorch 2.3.1, and then extracting this folder. And once we hit extract, we can go in here and see these files. Just go ahead, click update.bat, which will open a command prompt window and install everything it needs. And once that's done, we can hit run.bat and see it opens up command prompt. And after a few seconds, it's gonna open up in the browser. And this is what it looks like when Forge is plugged in and installed and up and running. Now, this is Forge, which by default, will run Stable Diffusion, but we can make it run Flux super easily. And to do this, we need to download the Flux dev model. So I'll be leaving a link in that description. There are a few different versions, but 99% of the users are gonna wanna use the Flux One dev BNB NF4 model. So in order to download this, all you have to do is go over here to files and versions, and then you're gonna wanna go over here to where it says Flux One Dev BNB NF4 V2, and go ahead and download that. Now, when you're saving this, you're gonna wanna go to wherever you have installed Forge earlier. And under that, you wanna go to Web UI, then Models, then under Stable Diffusion, and that's where you're gonna wanna place your Flux Dev model. Now, even though it says Stable Diffusion, it will run Flux. And if you have other stable diffusion models, you can also place them here and run them in Forge as well. So since I've already downloaded this, I'm just gonna go ahead and click close. And by default, you're not gonna see it show up at all because it's not gonna show up until you hit this refresh button, which is gonna go ahead into Forge and check that folder for that model. So by default, the UI may be set to SD, which stands for stable diffusion, but we wanna click on Flux, which is this tab, and it's gonna change some of these settings here as we can see in the UI. And then for checkpoint, you wanna make sure that you're using the right Flux dev model. So I'm gonna be using the BNB NF4 V2 version, and everything else I can leave at their defaults, but if you're working with a computer that does not have nearly as much VRAM or is not as powerful in terms of a graphics card, you can change your swap location to CPU and that might help you out a little bit. Otherwise, I think just about everything should work perfectly as their defaults. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm gonna type in a person standing in a bedroom holding a sign that reads, I am not real. And we can go ahead and try this out and let's go ahead and click generate. So here, once you see it generating, you can actually see the progress that it's making and it did not take too long at all. It actually says it only took about 15.5 seconds. And I gotta say, this looks very great. All of the details are awesome. We got four fingers, four fingers it looks like. 
an invisible thumb and legible text as well as a realistic looking person. So this is already working well, but let's go ahead and push this model. I'm gonna open up Mid Journey here and let's compare some of the results. So here we have an image that we've generated with Mid Journey. It's a beautiful woman wearing a yellow dress standing in front of a huge larger than life yellow flower. Yeah, this prompt is very long. So I'm just gonna go ahead, copy and paste this exact prompt into Flux and let's go ahead and hit generate to see just how different some of these results are gonna be from the Mid Journey results. Okay, now this is the final result. I can say it's not nearly as cinematic as the result from Mid Journey. However, we do have some pretty solid prompt adherence in which it does include the magical blue particles. And I don't know if you noticed this, but in the Mid Journey prompt, it is completely left out that aspect. Flux is highly, highly capable of taking in a lot of details and actually incorporating them into your final result. To show this a little bit better, I wanna give it a more detailed prompt. So let's go ahead and try this. Let's have a woman wearing a hype beast outfit stands on a fashion runway holographic drones and neon signs light up the atmosphere there's a yellow panda riding a blue bicycle next to her honestly this prompt is very crazy i would be surprised if it can make anything out of this but nonetheless let's go ahead and see what it can create and honestly this isn't even done but i'm already blown away the fact that it can have what looks like the drones and literally a yellow panda riding a blue bicycle. We have the neon lit atmosphere. Everything here is included, which is just mind blowing. So if you can imagine having a highly detailed prompt is gonna work much better in Flux than it is in Mid Journey. Now, one thing though that you will notice is that Mid Journey images always tend to look like they are coming out of a movie scene. They look impressive, really awesome, and that's thanks to the people sending their upvotes and really curating the way that it looks. Whereas with Flux, it focuses more on the generation side, similar to Stable Diffusion. It's not fine-tuned based off community feedback, and instead it's fine-tuned based off of its training data and the techniques that were used by the Black Forest team. So this is already super impressive. But let's go ahead and try out something else because we've given it real people, real subjects. I think a really awesome test is to also see how well it can handle illustrations or abstract art styles. So let's type in a cyberpunk mech warrior stands on a mountain with a large sword in front of a beautiful graffiti background. And then to make sure that it actually comes out in an illustrated art style, I'm going to add in the beginning an illustration of a cyberpunk mech warrior. So let's go ahead and try this out. And already, I got to say, this looks awesome. One thing, though, is that it does not have the graffiti background. So maybe there's uh, a little bit of something in the details in the way that I described it. I I'm actually starting to realize why it's not coming out the way I thought. It's because I put on a mountain. That does not make any sense. And I think now if I make it so that he's not in a mountain setting where of course it would need clouds and a sky. Instead, I took that out and I put in front of a graffiti wall. This is perfect. This is exactly it. So as you can see, the only issue here came with me as a user, not actually with Flux. This is amazing. It handles all of this. We have typography that's actually occluded by an element that we were able to generate with a high degree of customization. This is why Flux is becoming the king of AI image generation. It easily blows anything coming out of Mid Journey out of the water. And just to show you real time, let's go ahead. I'm gonna copy this prompt in. Let's paste it into Mid Journey. And I'll show you the jarring difference between Mid Journey and Flux. Okay, and this is what we have for Mid Journey. It's still an awesome image. Don't get me wrong. These are still really great, really high quality, except you can tell the difference between a version in which we have this black mixture kind of just stamped on versus this version where it is really these big graffiti letters. It includes the huge bubble letters part. This is not huge bubble letters. Neither is this or this is almost there. And this is probably the closest one except it loses the black part. This is a paid service using the paid plan with Mid Journey. This is what the results come up with. And as you can see, we're using Flux. This is completely free to run. And wow, this is the final result. As you can see, it handles the illustration style. It handles the text, multiple elements, the prompt adherence, all of it very well. 
And this is why Flux is becoming the king of AI image generation. Now, if you guys wanna go ahead and get to messing with this on your own, I wanna show you a couple settings that will change the way you use this program. So of course, there are so many different options and it would take forever to go through the entire documentation. So I'll show you the few settings that make a huge difference in generations. Obviously, the biggest ones, width and height, you're gonna wanna keep these values below 1024 by 1024 multiplied adds up to, I think it's a million in something and by default it's going to plug in these values for you if you wanted to change it from a vertical to more of a landscape you can just hit this button right here and it switches the width and height and if you still wanted to get a solid image at a different aspect ratio you can change this to 1024 which is what flux was trained on and you'll still get great results another thing you're going to notice is that there is batch count and batch size the batch size is how many images get generated in each batch. So if you were to set this to four, it'll create a block of four images four times. But if you set this to one and then four, it'll create one image four times and then add them together at the end, which you can see in this nice little collage. Distilled CFG scaled and CFG scaled. If you've used stable diffusion before, you may be used to playing around with this value but for flux we keep this at one which just means that it's not actually getting used and instead we want to use the distilled cfg value which is a bit of a guidance skill i honestly have found the best results to be at 3.5 but for longer prompts i have noticed that cranking this up a little bit to maybe around eight has also produced usable results as well Another thing that I want you to notice is that we have this little tab here called Reactor. And Reactor is not a part of Flux by default, but it's a really awesome extension. And that's actually what I wanted to show you as well, is if you're using Forge, extensions are gonna be an awesome way that you can really enhance and increase the way that you're using AI image generation. So in order to get extensions, it's super easy. You just go over here to the right extensions tab, go over to available. By default, it'll have this GitHub link. You just click load from and instantly you'll see a whole list of extensions that work with Forge that you can one click install and it's literally that easy. If you're curious about any of the extensions and what they do, if you hover over them, you'll see that it changes blue. You can click on the hyperlink, open it up in a new tab and you can see, wow, it looks like this uh, face manipulation extras one will give you extra options for manipulating faces. Now, the one that I recommend testing out is the reactor one. It's my favorite one. That's what's used for creating different face swaps. Another really cool thing that we can do is take these generated images and plug them into another AI, such as Runway's Gen 3 Alpha or Luma Labs's 1.5. Luma Labs just came out, so we're still making that video and reviewing it. It should be out pretty soon, so make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. In the meantime, you can check out Runway and Kling, which are super awesome and capable AI image to video generators. The results for them are amazing, and I'm going to be leaving them up here. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.